to another video off on another incredible journey. Yes, me and my mate Miles. Miles and I went to South End, uh, which you can see in my, one of my recent videos. And the noise of the traffic, the noise of the underground. It's all around us, isn't it? The traffic noise. Um, I suppose that's one of the downsides of, of living near roads is you get lots of traffic, the colossus of roads. Uh, Instead, there was an enormous traffic light uh, on the island of Rhodes, which the Romans built because uh, there had lots of chariots going by. Anyway, where are we? Well, you're going to want to see this, guys, because this is the junction of Cherry Orchard Road and Lower Addiscombe Road in the rain. And there is a, there is a kind of, uh, what's the word? Gloomy beauty. Yes, the gloomy beauty of our lives is reflected in this particular Croydon Junction. Uh, people have come from miles around for a pilgrimage here and uh, some of them even managed to leave again. This, uh, this particular Celeste wall that I'm standing in front of was the original site of the uh, Bianchi cycle factory. It uh, started here, funnily enough, in Croydon uh, before it moved to Italy and hence the colour. This, uh, this wall was painted this colour and Bianchi rather liked it and they adopted it for their bikes. And why not? Uh, riding the Mason today. Did you want to have a look? There's the Mason and it has on it for the first time the Apidura frame bag which I'm trying out for reasons that currently escape me. But uh, anyway I had a rain jacket in it which I'm now wearing as you may have noticed uh, because it's pouring with rain. Well, it's not pouring but it is raining. I haven't told you where we're planning to go, have I? Well, we're planning to go out west, up west, yes, along the Thames uh, in a loop that goes through Cookham and Marlow and Henley, names that resonate throughout British history for uh, reasons that can't really escape me. Uh, but it leads to uh, one of my favourite jokes, which is what do the people of that village do with the vegetables that they purchase from Aldi? Yes, you guessed it, cook them! And what do they do with the lasagna that they purchase from Lidl? Yes, they cook them! That's one of my better jokes. There are worse ones. Keep watching, you may hear them. If you'd like to hear more jokes, leave a comment down below. I love saying that. Well, we have reached Hampton Court Bridge after a swift, a swift run through the delights of Mitcham and Merton and Mains Park and Kingston. And this is Hampton Court. If you can see Hampton Court in the distance, I certainly can't. Uh, it might even be in the foreground. I'm not sure. And I have disrobed, not completely, taken off. The endure rain jacket. Do you see? There are a um, man in DHB today. Uh, you can see some rowers on the, the Thames, the Great River Thames. You probably can't see them actually, they're very small. They're right there, well, behind my finger, so you won't see them at all now. Shall I pan round? There's Miles. Miles is also disrobed. And there, panning round. There's another cyclist. Don't know him. There's some more cyclists crossing over Hampton Court Bridge. Pretty, isn't it? And it's stopped raining, which is why I've disrobed, in case you couldn't guess. Well, we have reached this rather attractive patch of water. Uh, with somebody shouting in the background and it says no swimming cold water can kill and this is 
Virginia Water. Now, funnily enough, everyone, you will not be surprised to learn that there was a boy at my school, no, actually, a girl, sorry, a girl at my school called, yes, you guessed it, Virginia Water. And what a nice place this is. And we, um, a little bit of trouble with the sat nav, and uh, the dog there. You see the dog? I'm sure you can see the dog. Little trouble with the sat nav. Um, took a few kind of variations, but managed to find our way and ended up here. You want to see my face, don't you? Ended up here at, yes, Virginia Water, which is rather pleasant. Lots of walkers, lots of children, lots of dogs, grandparents, all the things in the world that I hate most gathered together in one place. Yes, wouldn't you know it? We are so lucky. But, viewers, nobody cares. Nobody cares but me. And, uh, and we're going to do a little bit of cycling along a path that goes by the lake. Very attractive, isn't it? Uh, we've had some rain, in and out of the rain, had some puddles, my feet got wet. Yes, uh, they've dried off a little bit now, thanks for asking. And uh, still wearing the jacket, but it's unzipped. So uh, you'll be admiring my new felt, slimmed down version. Yes, this is Julian 2, 2.0, 2.0, Julian 2.0, the slimmer version. Uh, 3.0 coming soon to a channel near you. Signing off now. Right, now folks, time for a rant. Because I took this route from Kamut, Kamut.com, and here we are following the route by the side of Virginia Lake, except we are not allowed to, because look at this. No cycles ridden or pushed. Okay, I can understand if they don't want people to ride their bicycles, but why can't you push your bicycle? I mean, what is the problem? I guess the thing is they don't trust cyclists. They think, if we let you ride your bicycle, you won't, uh, if we let you push your bicycle as soon as you're out of eye shot, you're going to jump on it and ride it. So you can't do either. But that is just a pisser. Yeah, I've got to say it. Virginia Water Lake, this sign is a pisser. And I don't care who knows it. And Kamut, you got it wrong, guys. You got it wrong. So we have reached the rather attractive town of Henley-on-Thames. And Henley-on-Thames is famous for a few things. It's where the, uh, the, the shirt was invented. It doesn't have a collar. It's called a Henley. That was first worn here by uh, boatmen. Uh, it's also famous as um, as uh, the scene of the bridge, yes, this is the great Henley on Thames Bridge. That's a white pickup truck there, rather spoiling the view. There's a well, there's another white vehicle, and that could be miles, not sure. So, Henley, not bad, is it? We've come through some quiet roads, uh, fairly continuous but very light rain and I think quite a pleasant ride, bit of a wind, not too strong and um, Henley looks very nice, yes and why not, as they say, you want to see my face don't you? There, see my face in the So here we are, we've me and Miles have ducked into an alley and we found a map here and on the map it says you are here. Now how did they know that? How did they know that we'd be here today? And that actually mark it on the map. I tell you, science is wonderful. Is it science or is it geography? Or is it I don't know, it's that Bill Gates, that Geo dastardly Geo Bill Spatial. Gates. Sorry? Geospatial. Geospatial. That was miles, by the way, in the background. Do you want to see this alleyway we ducked into beside Sainsbury's <laughs> and we bought some water? Not a very attractive alleyway, 
but uh, needs must. And there we are, we're looking out onto temptation. Yes, uh, Oscar Wilde came here, uh, late 19th century, and uh, he said, I can resist everything but not temptation. That was one of his favourite shops. He used to buy scented candles, um, totes, that's a kind of carrier bag for rich people, and uh, stuffed animals. Very keen on stuffed animals was Oscar Wilde. It was next to Mr. Sims, the sweet shop, which he was rather partial to as well. The sweets, not Mr. Sims. Well, we have left the flesh pots of Henny on Thames behind, and we are now passing through this rather nice countryside, heading towards Marlow. As you can see, the the sky is blue at the moment, the rain has stopped, and there's miles firing up ahead. Um, if you find it a bit difficult to understand me at the moment, notwithstanding Mercedes 4x4's passing, is because I'm using the GoPro with the mouth mount, and I've also developed a cold sore on my bottom lip. You don't need to know how that happened. But it does make talking slightly more complicated and perhaps less easy to understand. Do you want to have a downward view? You always notice these different views of uh, people on their bikes. That's me. Well, you know it's me. You're watching my bloody video, aren't you? Mason. Yes, Well, we've stopped just beyond Christmas Common at this rather beautiful pretty spring bluebells in bloom scene. I was just saying to Miles that bluebells never quite look in a photograph how they look in real life. It's only a way, a way that film captures the kind of well, it's not blue, is it? That's the thing. It's lilac. Is it more lilac? Anyway, it's not blue. But what a what a tranquil scene we have stumbled upon as we clambered over some mud piles to reach this bucolic scene. Not quite sure what bucolic means, but something to do with bluebells. And so we have reached Marlow, the town of Marlow, which is on the Thames. And there is the great Marlow Bridge over the river. Here is the great church and cemetery. And there is the river down below. Let's get a close up. And here's a better view of uh, Marlow Bridge. There it is. A complete angler. I went there once for lunch. My boss took me. Posh for me now that I'm retired. And uh, there's the river. And the scudding grey clouds. Grey and overhanging. And the boat there on the river. Hard to see, isn't it? That's the trouble. It's like this cemetery, a church. For those people who wish to be buried at sea, they used to just throw them in the river. Things were hard in those days. 
You want to see me? Here we are. On the bridge at Marlow. Like the three men in a boat. I don't know if they were on the bridge, were they? Maybe the bridge wasn't here then. They were in a boat. Leave a comment down below if you know if they were on the bridge. The sky is looking a bit forbidding there. It shakes. Well, here we are in Marlow on the bench. On the bench in Marlow. I've been to Sainsbury's local. You want to know what I've got? got a BLT and malted bread. A uh, pork pie. My friend Mark swears by a pork pie when he's on a long bike ride. I must say, the thought of a, a warm, sweaty um, salmonella pork pie in your back pocket while you're riding along filled me with a great deal of enthusiasm, but Mark swears by it. What the Lucas Aid? wild cherry powered by glucose and yes the pièce de résistance snickers bar so sustenance will be taken i might next to a bin can you imagine that imagine putting a bench next to a bin not very hygienic is it we're stuck in this tunnel And put some air in his tyre which is getting a bit soft it is wet and pretty cold and pretty miserable my mate was he says we wouldn't do it if we didn't enjoy it listen listen to those cars just listen. That's the That's the sound of the planet dying. Well, we've arrived at Eton, my old school. <laughs> so I popped in to see if any of the fags were still there, and they were. Some of them are now teachers. Some are mathematicians, some are carpenters' wives. Don't know how it all got started, don't know what they're doing with their lives. And we're on the bridge, the bridge at Eton. Eton Mess. One of the uh, great puddings of the world was uh, invented here in Eton, funnily enough. And up there on the hill, I'm pointing to it, Windsor Castle, where lives our Queen with nine corgis and 47 servants. Or is it 47 corgis and nine servants? I can never quite remember. Anyway, she pays for the dogs, we pay for the servants. And aren't we glad to live in a country like England? Feast your eyes. I tell you, I'd feast on a fucking eaten mess if I could get my hands on one. Still raining, still cold. Our lives are as bleak as the weather. <laughs> But of course, the children of Eton will grow up to be our elders and betters, our politicians. Some of the finest politicians in the land went to Eton. Andrea Leadsom, um, Therese Coffey, Boris Johnson. You'll see my face. David who? David Beckham. 
David Beckham didn't go to Eton. David Cameron, I think you mean. The multimillionaire and former politician David Cameron was today appointed ambassador to the UN. Do you think she's in residence? No, she's only in residence if the flag is up. It is up. The flag? The flag is not up. Oh, where's the fucking it's flag? Look, you can see it. Alright, the flag is there. Right. Can you see the flag? Leave a comment down below if you can see the flag. Miles has had enough now. He wants to go home and watch The Pursuit of Love on BBC. <laughs> Another great BBC production. Miles is having a problem with his tubeless tyre. Kel surprise. And he's constantly having to pump it up. And I was saying to him that if you watched my video about Jimmy Bob Thames. Me and my mate John stopped to help a couple who had a problem with their tyre at precisely this spot. Now, is that not the most amazing thing you've ever heard? We've got about 20 miles left. It's, uh, it's still stopped raining. We're, we're quite wet though. And the sound of the cars is getting right up my fucking neck, as they say. Well, whew, that's the end of the ride. Uh, didn't do any filming since the last segment, simply because it was absolutely biblical conditions. Uh, rain poured down, roads were covered in water, flooded quite heavy wind. Uh, Miles said uh, we were lucky, it could have been worse, but uh, not quite sure how, Miles. Anyway, uh, if you want to see the numbers, always want to see the numbers. We have 123.3 miles, average 14.8, uh, 3,323 feet of climbing. Not very much climbing, but when uh, you're on the flat like that, as this ride was, of course any climb really feels like a killer. And because it's flat, there's no rest for your legs at all. It's just constant spinning. Uh, what did I eat? I had three of my homemade flapjacks, recipes available. Uh, I had a BLT sandwich from Sainsbury's. I had half a bottle of Lucasade. I had a Snickers bar. I had uh, one uh, little gel of honey. And that was it. Uh, three three bottles of water and about half a bottle of Lucasade. Now I'm going to have a hot bath and I fancy some sausages. Yes, that's the end of today's ride. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Uh, I meant to say a few words about the kit. This uh, Endure Pro SL rain jacket, uh, which you may have seen an unboxing of a week or two ago, uh, yeah, performed pretty well. Uh, kept me reasonably dry. I'm not sure that any jacket uh, would keep you dry in six hours of torrential rain, but uh, yeah, it did its best. It's not really that packable though. Um, you wouldn't really fit it into a back pocket of your jersey. Some of the, the Rafa jerseys and probably some others have a bigger kind of zipped pocket where you may be able to fold it up, but uh, otherwise I think you're going to struggle. But uh, in terms of uh, wind pro uh, rain protection, yeah, did pretty well. Um, the other thing is the, uh, the Apidura uh, frame bag, uh, which fits nicely and uh, uh, doesn't cause any kind of aerodynamic problems, any with anything that's particularly noticeable anyway. It doesn't hold a great deal of stuff. It did hold this rain jacket, spare inner tube, gas canister, couple of flapjacks so a useful storage pocket um, but be get, give some thought to what you're going to put in it and where you're going to stow the rest of your gear. Um, rest of the bike performed superbly as usual Mason definition always happy with this bike and uh, that's it now I'm off for my hot bath and some sausages so uh, see you next time.